Okay. Th thank you so much for having me and uh, for listening to a talk that will be about technology, but also about ourselves. Hence the title, Where Do Our Responsibilities Lie? I think we've already noticed here with all the emerging intelligent technologies, there are many opportunities out there. And as entrepreneurs who pursue startups, who want to have companies with innovation that matters, these opportunities are very much valued. But we also know that with great power, because we will impact society, we will impact our organizations, comes great responsibility. So today I would like to talk about where do our responsibilities lie when it comes down to using AI for good. And this refers to the topic of AI ethics. And as you can see in the title, there's a paradox that I would like to outline. I don't need to introduce AI, I think, to, you, to most of you. You're very well aware of it, but just a few numbers to show how much impact and how much power we can acquire by this is that we see that if we are able to AI to upscale it to a larger scale, the global economy could be boosted, PwC predicts, by 2030 by around 15.7 trillion US dollars. We also found worldwide that CEOs consider internet the, the internet was in 94, 95 when it became public very important. Well, we consider AI to be even more important. And finally, we expect that our societies and workforces by 2040 will be completely unrecognizable. So talking about impact, talking about power, talking about responsibility. AI is a general label, as we all know. It has different sub uh, components, natural language processing, machine learning. We use AI on a daily basis. I still have my P20, not P50 of Huawei, but it has AI as well. Actually, the P20, the AI was used by Huawei to finish the unfinished symphony of Schubert, the, uh, the part three and four, just by means of this AI in this simple phone. So it is powerful and it will influence everything we do. How does it relate to startups? I don't need to tell you that there's a massive interest in AI. Startups are emerging. So for example, 2019, just before the pandemic, we found that already about almost 27 billion US dollars was invested in AI startups. And 2021 is booming. It's the hottest tech area around, to say so. So just to give you a few numbers here, in terms of the national AI strategies when it comes down to uh, startups, we see that in China, current startups, almost 1,400. Australia, 528. Singapore, 537. New Zealand, 80. So in the Asia Pacific region, investments are hot. Even more so, Asia is leading. Our center also found that AI adoption is the highest in the Asian region, but we have a problem. We invest a lot, but the return on investment is very low. We found that about 90% of companies adopt AI, only 15% create value beyond. So there's a problem there already. So we see that there's more and more money flowing into the development of AI and commercializing it, having an impact on society. At the same time, we also see that it's not being used very effectively and together with that, we see that there's a problem in terms of how is it being used. So concerns on ethics in terms of using intelligent technologies is also on the rise. What, what do I mean by that, by ethics? So startups, of course, you're confronted with these challenges because you're promoting innovation. You're bringing something to the market that's new, that can make a difference. So there's a little bit of a tension there. So for example, I did uh, research among 74 tech startups and I asked them a question that expressed this tension. So when developing these new technologies, what did they find most important? To focus on the innovation process or the consequences that technology may reveal for society and all its stakeholders? And the numbers were very balanced. I mean, 55% said they advocated more the innovation over the consequences it reveals for society. 45% said it vice versa. So this really illustrates 
Companies are aware, startups are aware of these challenges, and it's very difficult to solve. There's a mixed feeling there. So what you see emerging is more and more startups starting to focus on the responsible use of AI. So in the last two years, the number of startups focusing on safety, risk management, responsible use of AI has grown enormously because they're confronted with these challenges when dealing with innovation and technology. So what is AI ethics or what does it deal with? What kind of challenges are we talking about? So some examples are, of course, the most obvious one, privacy. We have to manage data. We collect data of people. We have to make sure that these are secure, that these are not made public, that people's privacy is protected. But we also have the big topic of biases. Because AI uses historical data, in a way AI imitates us, of course it also imitates our biases. So there's many examples of where recruitment is biased because based on historical data, we recruit more uh, male, white male employees, or recently in the UK, because of the pandemic, they wanted to use an algorithm based on historical performance in the schools so students didn't have to do the A exams anymore, A level exams, but the problem was that it was extremely biased towards favoring the elite schools compared to the schools who have less financial resources. So we're dealing with these, um, with these biases in it. Also lack of transparency. How does the AI make the decision? How do we use these technologies? Can, is it explainable? Is it transparent? How does it replace jobs? Are we going to lose our job? How is it impacting society? So many consequences are there that initially we didn't realize because we thought artificial intelligence, the intelligent technology itself is more rational than humans, is more consistent, more accurate, faster. So it's all these benefits. But when we look at the social consequences, we're focused with a lot of these challenges. So how do we talk about AI ethics? That's the first point that I want to outline to move on to our responsibilities. How do we, in the business, talk about AI ethics? Because in itself, if you think about it, the concept AI ethics is almost something like we have an entity, AI, artificial intelligence, and it has ethics. The machine has ethics. What does that mean? How do we look at this? So it's... And this corresponds very well with what I see happening in society is that because the machine has intelligence, we almost equate it as having the same abilities or the potential to have the same abilities as humans. Because didn't we model the machine, the intelligence of the machines after the human brain? To some extent, that's true. But on the other extent, it's also not true because we don't even know about more than 20% of how our human brain works. So it's very difficult to model it. But we have a tendency to talk about machine in the same way as we do about human intelligence. Together with my friend and collaborator, Kari Kasparov, we developed a whole model where we actually arrived at the conclusion that because of this narrative in our business world, but also in our society, we have arrived at what we call a zero sum game. Basically, if we have the, the same type of intelligence, humans and machine, we're in competition with each other. This is why a lot of people are afraid that they might lose their job. This is why a lot of people are suddenly thinking, oh, but if machine takes over, do they have a moral compass? Can they think ethically? Can they process it in ways that's meaningful to us? So we arrive at a conclusion when we say AI ethics, oh, artificial intelligence probably should have an awareness of what it means in terms of good and bad outcomes. How, what it means to humans when there's a good outcome, what it means to humans when there's a bad outcome. So AI should be able to decide by itself to do good or not. That's what we should be pursuing. That's the narrative that we seem to be using. And it's also influencing how companies talk about it. And I call this techno-solutionism in ethics. The Silicon Valley attitude, as most of you know, is for any problem in the world, there's a technology that can solve it. This is the proponent, in my view, for it in the congressional hearings in 2018, Mark Zuckerberg of Facebook. To every answer that he had, he said technology has as a, as a solution. It has actually emerged in such a way that if we look, for example, at Google, 
The C Google basically came up with what they call Google's ethics as a service. And I noticed this when I talked to business people as well, that they say, ethics, responsible business, don't we have technology for that today as well? Isn't a technology able to prevent us from making ethical mistakes? Social issues can be fixed with the right technology. And if it doesn't work, then we have Google, because they come in and they fix the machine and they fix our ethics. People are starting to talk about this. But the problem is there's nothing magical about AI. Yes, AI can make decisions, and we can code it in such ways. It can learn. It has reinforcement learning that it makes decisions. But it makes decisions and reveals consequences, but it has no clue about what the meaning is to us when we look at the consequences. It's an unethical or an ethical outcome. How does that feel to humans? What, does it exp what is our experience about it? AI does not understand that because it has no consciousness, no empathy to understand the impact to, uh, for us. Yes, it can make the decision, but ultimately the choice that AI can make the decision that can impact us that choice is ours. That's a human responsibility. I hear this so many times that I'm going to read this. People are confused about the meaning of AI in discussions of technology trends. That there's some kind of intelligent thought in computers that's responsible for the progress and which is competing with humans. We don't have that, but people are talking as if we do. Because if you think about it, AI works with data. So AI will never really say anything that's new beyond those data. What we, we give data, that's why data quality is so important. That's why data management is so important. They're not going to suddenly philosophize about it and just give some alternative points of view. Also, AI doesn't have its own intentions. AI does not choose. We choose for AI. It can learn and based on that make decisions, but it has no intention to show bad or good behavior. The outcomes cannot be contributed to AI in that sense. Just to give you a few insights why I'm saying this. In natural language processing experiments, we found that when we gave three sentences, a person makes a reservation in a restaurant, person orders a steak, person leaves the restaurant and leaves a tip for the waiter. If I would ask you, did the person eat a steak? Most of you will say yes. AI doesn't know because we didn't make it explicit that the person ate the steak. So reading in between the lines is very difficult. Another thing is with, when we look at um, the meaning of learning. So, for example, at convolutional neural networks research, which is basically visual imagery, a filter across the pixels, for example, to, to, to get a visual image, it has difficulties saying what is the same and what is different. So, for example, an experiment that we did was where you had toy cars. The AI knew these were toy cars, but then when I ask an AI agent to pick up the toy car, it's implied that I'm talking about the same car we have been playing with and not some different toy car in the next room. So it means it cannot infer the meaning of a context related to what it's learning. So we still have a problem today to say, do we have machine with a consciousness? Because that's what's needed if we talk about AI ethics. If we expect our artificial intelligence to be responsible in the future and evaluate the consequences of our decisions, then we need to, to have that kind of consciousness. So, but AI doesn't have it. In a way, like I said, AI imitates us. It's a tool. So basically, it amplifies our biases. I always say complaining about bias in AI is like complaining about the image in the mirror. This also means that we cannot expect from AI for the same thing in ethics as in, for example, playing chess. We know that we can use AI to learn to play chess better and even learn things that humans can't. But we can't expect the same thing from AI in ethics, that AI ultimately will become better and more good than humans. It's a tool. The phrase, the algorithm did it, should not even be part of our, of our vocabulary. They cannot be held responsible for the outcomes they decide on. And of course, this makes it difficult to decide what are your responsibilities because what we see today everything's emerging fast if you don't do it someone else will there's huge competition but we need to be aware of it because we need to be aware of what we want to optimize with ai it's not only optimizing our productivity it's not only optimizing our economic value it's also optimizing what ai means to people 
This is what we do in our center on AI technology for humankind. So my recommendations are for any startup involved in technology, you need to start these discussions on what AI ethics means to you. But that means that your leadership matters. For every entrepreneur here in the room, for every entrepreneur online, your ethics, your responsibility that you show as a leader in your company towards any stakeholder matters, also in technology. You should have AI that incorporates your imprint as well, your view, your strategy. You need to be proactive in anticipating bad ethical outcomes. So that means I call this ethical risk sweeping. So when working on technology, when developing algorithms, when something putting out on the market, you have to go through the consequences of every step in terms of society. Because it, it's about your reputation. You can't blame the algorithm. Having more diverse teams help. People with different perspectives, different angles to look at. And finally, AI as a tool is also a good thing in terms of ethics. Because it amplifies our biases. It can help you to see what is it that you're doing wrong. Because it, eventually, we call AI the agent, but you're the principal, so it's your responsibility. Thank you. A round of applause for Professor David Dikrima.